today we're going to be discussing some lumbar injuries particularly involved in sports related injuries so when discussing lumbar spine injuries in sports it's important to first understand what the lumbar spine is and its function the lumbar spine is the lower part of the back that consists of five vertebrae l1 to l5 a lumbar spine injury involves damage to any of the structures in this area such as the vertebral disc ligaments or muscles when athletes experience lumbar spine injuries, they may experience symptoms such as low back pain, numbness or tingling in the legs or feet, and weakness in the legs. These injuries can occur due to various reasons such as improper technique, overuse, or trauma. Now when we're discussing lumbar spine injuries in sports, it's important to consider the specific sport and its movements, as some of these may put strain on the lumbar spine in different ways. For example, athletes in sports that involve repetitive twisting or bending such as gymnasts or wrestling may be more prone to lumbar spine injuries. It's estimated that around 10 to 15% of all athletes are expected to experience low back pain. Sports such as football and dancing on this case, which have placed stress on the lumbar spine, are believed to have the higher rates of low back pain compared to less physically demanding activities. The repetitive flexion, extension, and axial load type of movements that athletes place on their spine contributes to their low back pain even though they often possess superior strength and flexibility when compared to the general public. Numerous studies have shown multiple injury patterns in the lumbar spine demonstrating the increased stresses that the elite athletes place on their lower back. Some of the common causes for low back injuries in athletes can include sudden impacts or trauma as we said before, repetitive strain or overuse injuries, poor technique or form during activities, or underlying structural issues. Now let's talk about the different types of lumbar spine injuries that may occur in sports. Some of these injuries include lumbar strains, this occur when the muscle or tendons in the lower back are stretched or torn. Lumbar sprains, this occurs when the ligaments in the lower back are stretched or torn. Herniated discs occur when soft tissues between the vertebra and the spine bulges or ruptures. And spinal stenosis, this occurs when the spinal canal narrows, putting pressure on the spinal cord and its nerves. Let's go over a few different sports and the particular injuries that are involved in these sports. The first one is football. Now, football is a very popular sport in the United States, with many players becoming involved in early teenage years and participating in high-level practice and competition between the ages of 15 to 18. Although cervical spinal cord injuries sustained during football are high profile due to their potentially catastrophic nature and have received the greatest media attention, lumbar spine injuries are common. They account for roughly 30% of all injuries in just one study that has been shown. This can also lead to considerable morbidity and lost playing time. Disc herniations in football account for around 28% of lumbar spine injuries, with the majority located at the L5 to S1 and L4 to L5. Mechanism of injury is not well understood, but is related to blocking and tackling, with offensive and defensive linemen being the most commonly injured players by a position. Non-contact injuries also account for around 20% of lumbar spine injuries, likely from avulsion due to sudden changes in direction. Another common injury sustained by football athletes is spondylolysis, secondary to extension and rotation forces in the lumbar spine. These injuries generally respond well to bracing in the adolescent population, but often require direct pars repair or fusion in adults in order to expedite their return. These injuries generally respond well to bracing in adolescent population, but often require direct pars repair or fusion in adults in order to expedite return to play. Now, when they taught us in school, they always recommend that we do offer bracing for someone who is in their adolescent years. The difficult part of this is finding a individual particularly an orthopedic surgeon who's going to be able to do the bracing within a quick notice or a quick time frame. Now we threw a word called spondylolysis in there. This is an injury occurs when a stress fracture develops in the vertebra. Now we threw a word called spondylolysis. This is an injury that occurs when a stress fracture develops in the vertebra of the lower spine leading to lower back pain and stiffness. Now keep in mind if you're a football player and you're experienced lumbar spine injury or are having pain in this area you should seek medical attention as soon as possible to prevent further damage and ensure proper treatment. Treatment of the lumbar spine injuries may include rest, physical therapy, pain management, and chiropractic care, and in severe cases, surgery. Athletes should also focus on proper conditioning technique and training to reduce the risk of lumbar spine injuries and other sports-related injuries. So now we're going to talk about ice hockey. While ice hockey is a very popular sport in the United States, few studies have investigated the prevalence and mechanism of lower back pain in sports. One small study found that 95% of ice hockey players reported lumbar spine pain in their final year of play. However, MRI changes in the thoracolumbar vertebrae in the ice hockey players were studied over a 15-year interval and it was found that new abnormalities from baseline were infrequent. 
A more common mode of injury was the existing vertebral abnormalities continued to degenerate over the 15 year period. Now most of these individuals were around to 24 years of age and had started playing hockey since the age of 10. The criteria, the variables, and all the results of the study led investigators to conclude that most of the injuries sustained to the thoracolumbar spine occurred during the growth spurt phase of their adolescence and it is these injuries that persist throughout their career. As we know, hockey is a high intensity sport that requires significant amounts of physical exertion and places a lot of stress on the body. As a result, hockey players are at a high risk for various injuries including lumbar spine injuries. One of the more common types of lumbar injuries in hockey players is a lumbar strain. This is a common injury among hockey players which occurs when the muscles or tendons in the lower back are stretched or torn to excessive twisting, bending, or lifting. Hockey players may be at risk of lumbar strains due to the rapid frequent changes of direction, sudden stops and starts, and the heavy lifting required during the game. Now on to gymnastics. While the posterior column injuries, specifically spondylolysis and spondylolisthesis, are the most written about, other studies have noted anterior and middle column injuries in gymnasts to include disc herniation, compression fractures, disc degeneration, and Schmorl's nodes. One study took a look at 33 competitive female gymnasts without regard to the presence or absence of back pain. Evidence of uh, DDD or degenerative disc disease was found in roughly 24% with increasing rates of degeneration as age and competitive level increased. In a study performed, they took a look at 33 competitive female gymnasts without regard to the presence or absence of back pain. Evidence of degenerative disc disease or DDD was found in 24% of this population. They also found increased rates of degeneration as age and competitive level increased to roughly 63%. As we know, the best type of approach for certain things is prevention. So let's go over some preventative measures to make sure that you are stable in all dynamic properties of your body to allow you to perform at the physical peak during your sports activities and not get hurt. So preventing lumbar spine injuries in sports requires a comprehensive approach that focuses on several key factors. Here's some tips to prevent lumbar spine injuries in sports. The first is to strengthen your core. The muscles of the core help stabilize the spine and protect it from injury. Exercise that strengthens the abdominal, back, and hip muscles can help reduce the risk of lumbar spine injuries. The next is to use proper technique. Proper technique when performing sport-specific movements is essential to prevent injuries. Coaches and trainers can provide instruction on proper form and technique to help reduce the risk of lumbar spine injuries. The third point is a warm-up and a cool-down. Before and after sports activities, it is important to warm up and cool down properly. This helps increase the blood flow to the muscles and prepare them for activity as well as prevent stiffness and soreness afterwards. By increasing the body temperature, you allow it to increase the threshold of injury. So if a tissue is more warmed up, it is less likely to get damaged. The fourth is to wear appropriate equipment. Protective equipment such as helmets, padding, braces can help reduce the risk of injury. In, in addition, athletes should wear appropriate footwear to help provide support and stability. The next is to focus on flexibility. Tight muscles can increase the risk of lumbar spine injuries. Incorporating stretching and flexibility exercises into your training routine can help you improve range of motion and reduce the risk of injury. The sixth point is to manage load and volume. Gradually increasing the load and volume of your training can help prevent overuse injuries. It is important not to do too much too soon and to allow for the adequate rest and recovery. And the final and most important one is to listen to your body. If you experience any pain or discomfort during your sports activities, it is important to take a break and seek medical attention if necessary. Ignoring the pain or continuing to play through the injury can make the injury worse and increase the risk of long-term damage. So now you're seeking treatment for a lumbar spine injury. Chiropractic treatment is one option for addressing lumbar spine injuries in sports. Chiropractic treatment involves the use of manual manipulation or other techniques to address pain and other symptoms associated with musculoskeletal injuries, including lumbar spine injuries. When going to a chiropractor for evaluation for lumbar spine injuries, the chiropractor will typically conduct a thorough evaluation of the patient's medical history, symptoms, and physical condition to best determine the best approach. Chiropractors may use a variety of techniques to address lumbar spine injuries, including spinal adjustments, mobilization, massage, stretching, and exercise. The goal of chiropractic treatment is to alleviate pain, reduce inflammation, and improve mobility, as well as promote healing to the injured tissues. Now, depending on the extent and severity of the injury, chiropractic treatment may be used in conjunction with other types of medical care, such as physical therapy, pain medication, as in order to provide a comprehensive approach to treating lumbar spine injuries. As we covered before, prevention such as maintaining good posture, body mechanics, wearing appropriate protective gear, and gradually building up intensity and duration of physical exercise.